Hey guys, it's Joe, and in this video I'll be showing you how to humanize MIDI in Logic. This is a really easy and efficient way to make your MIDI sounds more realistic. So I've just set up this very basic drum loop using the drum and preset sounds here in Logic, so I'll just show you what that sounds like. And this simple bass line from one of the Logic bass presets. At the moment they are both quantized to 16th notes, so they play exactly on the grid. This will make it sound very rigid and it won't have any embellishments that would come from a real person playing a real instrument. I've also roughly set the velocities to where I want them, so on the drummer here we've got a rough hi-hat pattern and some bits going on with the kick as well. And on the bass we've got harder hits on the second and fourth beats of each bar. So to actually humanize our MIDI we need to select the regions we want to change, so we're going to do the second half of this drummer here. And then we go up to functions, MIDI transform, then halfway down is humanize. And then this window opens up. Now to actually use any of this, we need to know what these three buttons at the bottom here do. And we've got select only, operate only, and select and operate. They speak for themselves quite well in that if you select the region you want to change like so, and then press select only, you'll then be able to manipulate everything in that region, as you can see here by all the events popping up, so it's registered it. And once they're selected, you can hit operate, and then all the changes will happen, which I'll be showing you how to do in a minute. Using select will highlight everything in your region, whereas if you want to only change a small part of it, or just a couple of hits, then you can go into your piano roll, select the parts you want to change, hit operate only, and as you can see, it's gone from 59 all the way down to 4, these 4 being the ones I've selected here. If you want to change the entire region, then just press select and operate. The values we'll be looking to humanize will be the position, velocity, and length. And in order to do that, we'll be using these parameters down here. So on this parameter here, which when is on plus or minus random, will either increase or decrease your value by a random amount between the number you've chosen. So if we increase it to 10 here, it will increase or decrease the position by between minus 10 and 10 units. So I basically nudge a note to the left or the right ever so slightly. We have different values here, the farthest on the right being the smallest. And as you can see, it correlates with these up here, the bar measurements up here. So this is the smallest one, so we tend to use that one. The one next to it is a quarter beat, so it's a bit too big for what we want. Then it's a full beat, again too big, and a bar, which is far too big for what we want. So we'll just stick to the smallest value over here. So I'll just show you how it works. So we've selected our part here. I'll just go into the piano roll so you can get a better visual of it. So we're going to be changing all of this. So if I hit operate only, it will now be increasing or decreasing the position by 10 or minus 10 units. So you can just see them moving around down there. Because it's quite a low value, it's only going to be nudging them slightly. Whereas if we chuck it up a lot more, you can see them really hopping about. No matter how good of a musician you are, it's next to impossible to play every single note of a song bang on the dot, which is why this is so useful. Keeping the number low will help to make things sound more natural, but a bit looser, instead of completely rigid as if it were a drum machine. Now we're going to set our value back to zero, and we're going to have a look at velocity next. As people won't play an instrument with the exact same velocity each time they hit a note, this function helps it sound a bit more realistic. So again, we'll make this one, make this one 10, then we'll just operate it, and then you'll be able to see all the velocities changing ever so slightly. And lastly is the note length. And we have the same measurements over here as we did for the position. So we'll be using the farthest right again, and we'll set that to 10. Do the same thing, and we'll be able to see them getting ever so slightly longer or shorter. Just chuck that up a bit so you can see it better. There you go. But obviously, it's a bit extreme for what we want, so it's best to keep a smaller value. As note length is probably one of the easier things to keep consistent, it is good to keep this one at a smaller value. So we're going to operate on both the drums and the bass here for the second half and then listen to them back to back and see how they've changed. So first we'll get rid of this one, copy that over, select both of these, so now we've got select only, so it's gone up to 83, so we've got the bass in there too. I'm going to set the position up to 12, velocity on 8, and probably keep the length at about 10. So now we can watch them all change. So as you just saw, I pressed operate only about five times. This is because then you can get a truly random value out of it. Each time I hit operate, it affects a new value that I've created. This way, everything will be different from one another and it will sound more human. 
Now let's hear them back to back. So we're going to be starting out with the very rigid part and then our second half here is going to be the more humanized version. It may only be subtle, but it does certainly make a difference. This is a very useful function to make your MIDI sounds come to life a bit more, and as the function suggests, makes it sound more human. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment or contact me via my website. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.